oh boy, good morning. I have tea today. We're out of coffee. And I feel like I look like we're out of coffee. <laughs> that is neither here nor there though. Welcome, my name is Lee. Welcome to this space where we chat about knitting mostly, sometimes crochet, sometimes cross stitch, sometimes sewing. Um, I have almost all knitting for you today. I have one cross stitch and I have not a whole lot of whips. I actually didn't know what to do with myself when I was going around gathering up my project bags this morning. I couldn't believe how few bags I was bringing up here because I finished some stuff. Hi, if you're new here, I had my first week last week of working full time as a freelancer, freelance illustrator, and so I worked a full five days last week. And it was honestly the first time since my first job, sorry the heat just kicked on if you can hear that, um, my first job after college was the first time I had, no I mean sorry, was the last time I worked one job five days a week. Ever since I left that job I've worked two jobs, both freelancing and a part-time job. So last week was my first time since then that I worked five full days doing one job and I was able to have a weekend. I didn't expect to feel that way, but this weekend I was completely surprised by how free I felt. When I was doing freelancing part-time, I felt like any day needed to be productive in some way. Very much, you know, the to toxic hustle kind of mindset. But when you're working part-time at one job and working part-time at another job that you want to be your full-time job, you feel like you have to put in a lot of effort. You need to take advantage of all the free time you have. And wow, it was wild to have a free weekend, an actual weekend off. I don't think I realized that I hadn't had a weekend off in years, <laughs> years, oh my gosh. Except for like a vacation maybe, but even those I always had that little voice in the back of my mind where I was like, oh, I should be doing something. Oh. Yeah, I'm still reeling from it a little bit. It is Monday now. Monday what? Monday, March 28th. Welcome. Let's do this today. I'm wearing my salty sweatshirt from Natalie Koromoto. It is one of my favorites. Oh, man. Oh, the whole point of me saying I had a whole weekend off was I got a lot of knitting done. I did a lot of knitting on my weekend off. So great. No pressure. No pressure. I even did like a couple of social things. Like we went to dinner with friends last night and on Saturday I met a friend for coffee and I still had so much time for knitting. All right. Let's get into it. Let's get into knitting. I will update you on anything else either as we go or at the end. We are very casual here. We don't have rules. I try to do things in some sort of an order to keep myself organized, but that's it. No rules here. I painted my nails this morning. They're still a little messy. I did not wash my hands. Like scrub around my fingernails. I didn't do that yet. But I painted my nails. And this is the first time I've had my nails painted in a very long time because I could not have my nails painted at the bakery. I'm also wearing one of my vintage rings today. This one is vintage, uh, I believe, not antique, but it is a uh, star set uh, diamond in a gold band. Yeah, knitting. I guess we're gonna start with FOs. You may see here, I have finished a lot of socks. Oh my god, I'm so excited to have so many socks finished and I know this looks, it's three whole pairs of socks finished and I'm pretty sure it's been about a week since I filmed last. I actually think I'm gonna film every week, if I can. But these were not all started at the same time, like this one was lingering and they all just happened to be pretty close to the end at the same time. So I have three pairs of socks here that you have seen before. We'll go oldest to newest. I have my chicken socks first. My chicken socks are 
a pair of worsted weight vanilla socks. Their hand dyed color is different for each sock because that's how hand dyed yarn do sometimes. They are also, I, I weighed out this yarn in, into exactly half and half. It was exactly half and half. I think my gauge was just a little bit different on the second sock and I was, let me line these up, this much shorter for the cuff of the second sock. <laughs> I can't believe that. I'm like low key annoyed about it, but it's not really that big of a deal. I mentioned in my last episode that the way I'm planning on wearing these is folded down anyway like this. So I don't think anyone will be able to notice once they're folded down. But that's the first finished object. The yarn. This is a worsted weight superwash merino. I believe it's 100% superwash merino. The brand is Dream in Color and the color is All American Hen and I do not have the tag for it. But it is lovely. It was a lot of fun. I used Size two needles and 52 stitches using a just basic vanilla. I actually used a DK, the DK counts. So it's a little bit dense, which will be really good for stability since, or not stability. I can't think of the word. It'll be good to keep it going with no nylon in it. So that's what I did for the first, my first FO. Second FO is my pair of March striped socks. I mention this every episode because it's relevant every episode, but if you're new here, I am doing a pair of striped socks every month this year just to give myself a fun challenge. I mean, I gotta work through some of my striped yarn. So it was, it was really arbitrary. I just really said, oh, I'll just do a pair of striped socks every month, it's fine. Honestly, I probably would have done a pair of striped socks every month anyway. <laughs> but it's official and I have a thing to name them in Ravelry now. But these are my Kiwi socks. These are also those and these, all of these socks are for me. <laughs> I'm a very selfish knitter. Welcome. Let's be selfish together. But this is the Kiwi sock set from... Oh, I thought Brad was coming up the stairs, but he was coming up the basement stairs and I could hear it through the floor. Um, these are the Kiwi socks from Tiny Human Knits. It was a sock set with this brown, cute, cute outside of Kiwi fuzz color for the contrast. And I did 64 stitches on size one needles. And I love these. They're so cute. Look at the Kiwi. I really hope she re-releases her fruit colors this year because I really want her watermelon color. I also have the banana color, but I need the watermelon. So they're done, March is done. March is done. I've been able to keep up with all of them so far. Knock, knock on wood. Now my last FO is this, these socks. These are my crocus socks. I started these not too long ago. I was really itching to cast on this particular yarn. It is, I do have the tag for this one. It is Yarn Baker. I believe she's out of Greenville, South Carolina, which is uh, not my hometown, but I'm from South Carolina and I spent a lot of time in Greenville growing up, or college and later, because I had friends, a lot of friends from Greenville. So I spent a lot of time in Greenville. I really love it there. Um, but yeah, Yarn Baker, and the color is Crocus. This is a light fingering weight, uh, 7525, and yeah, you know, some fing some fingering weights just feel thinner when you knit them up. This is definitely a light fingering. And the contrast color, I actually do have right here, is Fiocolana Arveta, if I turn it right side up, in the color, I think it's called Light Orchid, the number's 278. It could just be Orchid or something. But this is the contrast color I picked for this. And I love how these turned out. Look how cute. Well, so springy. I love, all the crocuses here are popping up and I love it. It's so nice to walk around and see all the crocuses. It did snow yesterday and was snowing just a minute ago again, 
So I don't know how everything's gonna go. But the crocuses were very beautiful while it was warm last week. So those are done. I did just a little bit of the contrast color on the cuff, like I do a lot of times. And then the heel and toe, I used hardly any of this yarn. I did not weigh what I had left, but it looks like I may have only used 40 grams or something. So I definitely have another pair of socks out of this. One day, if I feel like knitting it up again, was lovely. And I'm done with that tag. Now, I should face you. Now, let's do whips. First whip I'm going to show you is, I guess I'll start with my second newest cast on. I started a new pair of socks yesterday. That's my newest cast on. But this is the second newest cast on. I mentioned this in a past uh, podcast episode. It may have been the last one. It may have been the one before. I'm not 100% sure. And let's see if I have... I printed out the pattern because I like to have them physically out. But I don't know... I don't think I do. I don't have a photo because I pick and choose what pages of the pattern to print so I don't waste paper and ink. Let's see. This is the Seaborn Tea from Hannah of Herb Garden Knitwear. And I cast mine on. I was so excited to be able to start casting on summer or warm weather knits. This is a worsted weight top and it is short sleeved and made out of 100% cotton. So it's very much like a transitional piece. I don't, since it's short sleeved and it's a bit cropped, I don't think it's gonna be that heavy, but I don't know. It'll at least be transitional transitionally appropriate if not full-on summer. I'm still not a hundred percent used to the summers here in Pennsylvania. Um, in South Carolina you basically had to wear as close to nothing as you could get away with to survive. It was so hot. Here it's more mild so I could probably wear this in the summer. But I've cast on my Seaborn tee. I'm not super far yet. but I think it is turning out very cute. There is one mistake that bugs me every time I pass it. Okay, it's on the back. So you can't, I was just making sure you couldn't see it. It's got this gorgeous like skinny stripe going all the way up and I love that. I love it. I think it's so cute. I have this really adorable uh, stitch marker from Sassafras Knits. It's juicy look at those juicy stones that's the best word for them they look really juicy and like i said this is 100 percent cotton worsted weight the yarn is juniper moon nev and the colors are limelight and uh, i can't remember the name of the other color it'll be listed in my project page linked below but I think it has something to do with espresso. It may, I think the color is picking up pretty good on camera. It looks kind of gray, but also has a really nice rich brown undertone. And here's what they look like kicked up. There's limelight. And whatever this espresso color is actually called. was I felt brave picking these colors, but I love them together. And yeah, that's as far as I got. I am on, I just started a round of the espresso and got tired. Okay, so when I was ac actually, let me tell you about my adventure with this so far, I probably would be way farther on this than I am because it is worsted weight. It works up pretty quickly, but I watched all two seasons of Blown Away while while knitting these uh, seashell patterns at the bottom. It's a twisted rib pattern and it really hurt my hands. Like a lot. Twisted rib kind of hurts my hands anyway. I have, um, I have problems with my right hand from working at a computer for eight years in a row. It weakened my hand and wrist muscles and I'm currently doing exercises for it but I'm not back up to 
a tip-top shape yet so twisted rib really hurts my hands and doing this like twisted rib as a actual like pattern where I had to like do complicated uh, decreased stitches and increases and stuff out of cotton was kind of was kind of tough like I had to actually rest my wrist I didn't not knit but I only knit gentle things for the rest of the weekend I did um, a lot of stockinette I did things that were on things in much looser gauges so I'll show you actually what I worked on and they really did wonders yeah that's my first whip I am that yarn and the fabric it makes is so luxurious it's I love the way cotton feels it's a Pima cotton I love how weighty it is and I love how um, drapey and soft it is at the same time it's just lovely I love working with cotton I know a lot of people it is hard on your hands like like I said it's not really stretchy so it is difficult doing complicated patterns like that but it's also uh, it dries out your hands a lot when you work with it it doesn't have oils in it like wool so it really dries out my like knitting fingers. I have to make sure to stay nice and moisturized when I work with cotton, but I think it's worth it. So I think it's lovely. All right, I will save the most exciting one for last and show you my most recent cast on. I cast this one on, like I said, yesterday, and it is my April striped socks. I know I'm a bit early, but we went to go see the Batman two nights ago and when I got home from the Batman, I had just finished three pairs of socks and I really wanted to start a new pair of socks, but I did not know what socks I wanted to cast on. And it was too, I didn't, I didn't have time. Like I, it wasn't the moment for me to sit down and decide what sock yarn to pick for the next pair of socks. So I went the easy route and just started my April striped socks because they were already picked out and I knew I would have to start them anyway. So for April, this is what, oh, I can tell you. I have a tag right here. I am using Sorella yarn. This is from her Disney collection. It is called People Mover. And this is a micro stripe. Her old classic sock base was 100% merino. Um, so I will be using a contrast color for the heels and toes. I will get into that. But let me show you the sock. Here it is. Look how, I love how these micro stripes knit up. I have some from Sorella that do this and then also uh, Republic of Wool. Her yarn also stripes like this. So I love this little micro stripe. It's not a full self striping, but so much fun. And I love the colors. It's very beachy to me, which I was kind of in the mood for. I also have this little progress keeper on here from Pitter Patter Polymer. So cute, little, little daisy with a face. Adorable. But for contrast colors for these, I figure I will see how I feel. But I picked this color. Oh gosh. Originally, I picked this color to be, the, I split it. I only had a little scrap, so I split it in half so I'd make sure I had enough for both socks. Um, but I'm not 100% sold yet. I was also thinking that a red might be nice, but I don't know. I don't know. I do like this. I'm also not sure if I'll have enough of this. I could probably get a whole heel and a stripe around the toe out of these. I don't know. We'll see. I am just knitting the leg until I get to the heel and then I'll make the final decision. I may come digging through. I was digging through all of my little scrap buckets and stuff, so we'll see. That's how far I got on these. These are so much fun. Oh, and they're 64 stitches for me on size one, 2.25 millimeter needles. These are also in my octopus woodsy and wild bag. Since the yarn reminded me of summer, I went for a secreter. All right, I only have one more knitting whip. This is wild, you guys. My last knitting whip is here in my really 
fuzzy paisley and gold sewing bag or paisley and gold sewing hamilton project bag in this gorgeous green color but you see how much like there's mohair fuzz all over this all over it mohair fuzz and dog hair but there's something very exciting inside that you have seen before but i have my owlery blouse i sat down Okay, I made sure basically to work on this every day this weekend. And then yesterday I realized that I actually could, I was really close to the collar. So I sat down yesterday and I just did it. I just finished all of the knitting. Look at her. Oh my gosh. I am so pleased with how she looks. <gasps> to be fair, she looks a little small. This is a... Uh, sock yarn it's superwash merino uh, I believe it's an 8515 so this will block out a bit and the sleeves definitely fit like I've tried them on but I have not tried the whole sweater on yet <laughs> and also to be fair it is supposed to be a negative ease or an exact ease sweater like a zero ease so we will we'll see how it goes currently I am on the eternity of weaving and ends portion of this sweater I think I've woven in maybe a third of the ends maybe up to half I'm not sure and then I need to put on a button because the collar buttons at the top here oh my gosh so this is her up close the top is just mohair knit held single and it is Little Lion Head Knits in the color Elderflower. There is merino around the places that need to be like uh, structured. And it is the, it is also Little Lion Head Knits, her sock base in the color Elderflower. And it has this keyhole detail. It was a lot deeper. I went ahead and sewed it up just a little bit. It looks pretty clean. I think when it blocks out, it'll look even cleaner. But I also love how the collar ended up knitting out. It lays so beautifully. This mohair is, I don't know if it's just the mohair. This one is very fuzzy, but I also remember when I started this a long time ago that I had a really hard time meeting gauge for the pattern. So I think what I ended up doing was changing, like knitting a completely different size. So the fabric for mine may be completely different from how hers was. I imagine mine may be a bit tighter, like my gauge may be a bit tighter. So that's it. That is the Owlery blouse. I just have to finish weaving it in and sew on my little button. I have pulled two buttons from my little sewing bucket these are, this is this one is more similar to what I was imagining for it, a nice round uh, white, like mother of pearl button. But I also pulled out this one just in case because I thought it was kind of cute and it is larger. I'm not 100% sure this one will be big enough, but I will try and we will see. Because a little delicate white button on this would be perfect. But that's it. Oh my gosh, I'm so close to finishing. I could finish. I could finish it today. I could finish it. I really should try it on. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Kind of nervous. I have this much mohair left. A ton. So I will be using it for the cuffs of some socks, I'm sure. And I have this much of the main color left. You gonna focus? There we go. This much of the main color left. So a good bit. Not not a ton, but enough for a couple of heels and toes and some socks. All the extra stuff goes to socks. Oh, it's so... Oh, I also have to sew up one armpit. I did the other one already. Oh, I'm so excited for this to be done. This has been on the needles for so long. So long, I will not be able to wait. Well, it looks like a really springy garment, but it's mohair, so I don't know. It is mohair held single though. 
could be just in time for spring to be able to wear this. Ooh, man. That's nice. Oh, I only have one more whip. And it is a cross stitch. Yes, I say cross stitch. You have seen this one before. It is the Let's Stay Home cross stitch from Satsuma Street. Last time I showed you, uh, if you were there, you will see the difference. If not, you won't know the difference. But I have not done a ton on this. Also, I need to give the disclaimer that I am a casual cross-stitcher TM. I, capital C, capital C, I do not hold myself to strict cross-stitch standards. I try to make them as clean and pretty as I can, but you, if you are a serious cross-stitcher, please do not come at me for how this is in a hoop. It is, it is a way. This is my cross stitch. It is precariously held in this hoop with uh, by just the corners because I wanted to be able to get the entire height of the piece in the hoop. So I have gaps and I'm fine with it. It works, it gets the job done. And if you see here, last from last time I uh, talked to you, I finished off the red crosses here and I filled out the rest of the sparkly blue clouds. They're all in, but they're not all crossed yet. And I started this cornflower blue, which is mostly just in the rainbow. I think there might be some in the flowers too, but I started the cornflower blue. So cute. I really love, I substituted almost all of the colors for this cross stitch. So almost all but two of them have been substituted. Two of them are the original called four colors, but all of the others, I picked a different color because I thought hers were too bright. I wanted something a little more muted. And as you can see, it is still really bright. So if you can imagine how bright the original was. And that's it. That's it for whips. That's all I got for whips. I was gonna bring my envelope cowl up here and show you, but then I remembered that I don't think I've actually worked on it. I really don't think I have. At least not enough for you to be able to notice any difference. And, wow, that felt really short. I do have um, free bags though, now that I finished up all those socks and I finished two sweaters, I did cast on one, but I finished two and I'm about to finish a third. I think I'm gonna get ready to start a new sweater. And I think I will also go ahead and go through all of my sock yarn today and pick my next pair of socks because I am, my heart is ready. I, ooh, I might start my Hello From My Colors crop. I did say that was the one I was gonna start when I was done with my Owlery blouse. I might do that. And those would go really well in this bag after I lint roll it. Ooh, I think I might do that. I will finish this up today and I'll get my bag ready to start my Hello from my Colors crop. Oh, that's gonna be so exciting. I do still have this here for a pair of Curio socks by Andrea Mowry. I just don't feel ready. I don't feel ready. Maybe I am. Maybe I can cast these on. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But I have some gorgeous winter colors up here that I might try. I'm gonna take a moment when I'm done podcasting and I'm going to really sort, I'll pull out a bunch that look tasty and I'll like pick and choose. What if I was wild and cast on two sweaters? What if I cast on two sweaters today? I probably shouldn't do that. I probably should finish another sweater that I've had going for an eternity. I have a Twigs that I started a long time ago that really needs work. Anyways, that is all I've got. It's only been like a week since I podcasted, so I feel like there's not a whole lot of like news to tell you. I do have one thing to tell you. I officially have ordered washi tape, new washi tapes. This is art business related, but relevant here because I have ordered yarn themed washi tape. 
I have designed three washi tapes. They're all basically the same design, but I'm ordering in them in different colors and styles. But they're just yarn. And maybe I'll put a, a picture up here, maybe, if I can figure that out in editing. But uh, I have three new washi tapes coming in that I'm very excited about. So that's exciting on the yarn on the yarn front I am supposed to have a full studio today studio day today so after I'm done filming here that's what I'll be doing my schedule for the podcast I believe is now going to be filming every week and uploading that same week instead of waiting an eternity between filming and editing my episodes I may skip a week here and there if there is nothing to talk about. But the plan right now is every week. All right, well, thanks for joining me for a short and sweet one, I guess. I'm going to pick my next sock yarn. That's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for joining me, especially for a shorter episode. I know normally I talk a lot more, but thanks so much for joining me and I will see you guys in the next one.